Hey everyone, in this video, we are going to look at how can we get inputs from user and use that input to drive the model. So let's get started. For the purpose of demonstration, I have this basic extrude feature in part mode right now. So the size of this feature is not of, not of our concern, so it can be anything. So on top of these features, I have two patterns. One pattern has these circular poles and another pattern has these square poles. So now we are going to decide based on the user input whether which pattern must appear on the model. Say for example, instead of manually suppressing and unsuppressing the features that we want and don't want, we can give inputs to Creo in the form of text so that it decides itself and programs the model based on the input. So let's get started. So for a moment, I'm going to hide these two features. So in order to get started, you have to first make your feature ID is visible in the model tree. If the feature ID is not visible, you can go to this tools drop down, go to tree columns and in info, you will find something called feature ID. You have to click on the feature ID and press this double arrow to bring it on the model tree. So this is important because when we program our model, we have to direct our uh, program or our command to this feature ID, particular feature ID, so that up, so that command applies to that feature ID alone and not to everything else, just for distinguishing purpose. So if you go to tools, parameters, you have an option uh, that has, uh, you know, different parameters in the model. So, so for example, we have some default parameters like description of the model, model by material, report material, etc. I'm going to create a new parameter that is called poll type poll underscore type this will be a string because poll type is a word right so i want a circular type or a square type so this is a string so right now uh, i'm going to leave it at uh, you know null value it's not going to have any value i'll click ok so in order to drive the model based on input what you should do is uh, Within tools tab, you have something called model intent. If you go to that overflow of the model intent menu, I have the program here. So it has show design. So it shows how your model has been coded in order to perform the way it should. Okay. So we have to edit it. So you should go to edit design mode. And if you go to edit design, you will be directed to a text box or a notepad. Within this, you have to find the particular feature ID you want to control. So before we go to control our feature IDs, we should uh, uh, enter our inputs uh, or uh, ask Creo to you know fetch inputs from the user. So that is this line called input and end input. So you have to create a new line in between. And I'm going to create an input for poll underscore type, which is the parameter which created uh, a minute ago. So poll underscore type, and this should be a string. And on the next line, you should enter what is the prompt that the Creo is going to ask you in order to fetch this input. I'm going to say enter poll type. This is our input. And then you should search for the feature ID. So first I would like to control the circular poll condition. I'm going to press control F to find the feature ID. I'm clicking on the text box and writing 271 because 271 is the feature ID of circular poles. We'll write find next. So find next, the so add feature is here, right? So the internal feature ID 271, add feature. On top of the add feature, you should write the condition. So if all underscore type equal to within quotes circular. So we are telling Creo that this feature must continue to be added to the model only when this condition is met if poll type equal to circular. So we have created an if statement and we have to end that if, right? So, so what we are going to do now is we are going to uh, search for the next feature ID to get the end of the other one. Instead of scrolling through and finding it, we have to enter 385, find next. So it has given us 385. So since this is the start of this second pattern here, the above end add should be the end of the previous one. So we are going to end that if here, end if, and then create an next line. Now on the second line, we should type if poll underscore type equal to square within quotes. Now we have to scroll to the bottom most part of this code and on top of the mass property, you will have to enter end if. So this is going to end our if statement. 
So I will save it by pressing Control S on my keyboard. You can either do it in here as well as Control S. Close out of it. So if your code has been accepted successfully, it will give you this prompt like confirmation. Do you want to incorporate your changes into model? Yes. Yes, I do. So since we have given some uh, uh, inputs to Creo to ask for user uh, inputs, so it is asking for if you want to accept the current values or enter. So I want to enter values. So I'll select the parameter which I want to enter values for. Click on poll type. Done selection. So it is asking me for poll type. Enter poll type. I want circular. Done return. So as you can see, my model tree uh, with the circular pattern has been suppressed. So I'll turn on this circular poll here, which was hidden. So if you try to unsuppress this right now, you won't be because this is being controlled by the program. If I go to tools and parameters, you can do it either way. You can go to tools and parameters and type square and regenerate the model. I'll say current values. So now you can unhide this circular poles and uh, sorry, unhide this uh, square poles and you can see circular poles have been suppressed. So this is how the model works. You can go to parameters and uh, change this value every time or you could just simply regenerate the model and the creo will ask for inputs you can say current values or you can uh, enter values so i'm going to enter it again so i'll enter circle circular so we have circular poles then i'll regenerate it again i'll enter it done selection i'll write square so I have square poles. So this is how you can automate your model based on input. So this was just a simple demonstration. And for a model of this scale, you can easily go and unhide or hide or suppress anything you want. It won't take much time. Imagine if you have a large assembly and you want to suppress particular uh, group of items. Say, for example, we have used a group of items using a pattern here. But in an assembly, you can group together a lot of uh, uh, similar items and you can suppress them in one go instead of uh, manually searching for uh, those parts in the graphics interface or in the model tree i hope you would have got an idea of how to use pro program to drive your model automatically if you have any questions please drop them in the comment section we'll see and i'll try to answer your questions thanks a lot